fine as fire. My heart's one desire is to be. Set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. Welcome to this Sunday service. My name is Lol Wood, and it is great to be here with you this week. This is our second week of Advent, so once again we are going to start by lighting our Advent wreath. Today we light a candle of peace. Not just the kind of peace built on avoiding the real issues or ignoring the conflict in the world, but in the name of real peace. As we light the candles we take a moment to think of those places and situations where hatred and anger, war and troubles, replace the peace that's needed. Remind us all that in Advent, we think of that peace of God which is beyond our understanding. A rich, deep peace that starts within us through our love for God. Join me in the response. Lord, we come to you reminded of that special peace you offer. Teach us to be channels of that peace so that all may feel your presence this Advent season. Amen. We are going to hear our reading next. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Advent is a time of preparation, a time of making ready to celebrate once again the birth of Jesus the beginning of his time on earth in our sphere of time and space and all that he achieved on our behalf then. His arrival was something that the world had been waiting for for centuries. The prophets had foretold it for generations. Our reading today harks back to the prophet Isaiah and always makes me think of that song from Godspell. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I don't imagine John the Baptist singing. Maybe he did. He did lots of other weird things like wearing camel's hair clothes and eating locusts and wild honey. So why not singing? But in our reading, he is that voice crying out in the wilderness, telling people to prepare, to prepare to receive Jesus, God in human form. And what do we need to do to prepare here and now? What should we be doing this Advent? 
If we are expecting guests, we may need to have a clear out to make the space. We may need to get rid of junk that may have been cluttering our lives for years. We may need to have a good cleaning session. And for almost all cleaning, water is a vital ingredient. Washing was an important part of ritual preparation for worship in Jesus' time. On a visit to the Holy Land last year, all the excavated sites included ritual baths or mikvahs, which had steps down into them and were filled with naturally collected water through which worshippers must pass for cleansing in preparation for worship. The waters used in baptism mark a ritual cleansing at the beginning of a new relationship, a new phase in our life with God. John was baptising people in the Jordan to get them ready to receive Jesus, God in human form. Jesus, who will in turn baptise not with water, but with the Holy Spirit, that way in which God can dwell within each and every one of us. Today, we baptise people for the same reason, to mark the beginning of a new life in God and to get them ready to receive God into their hearts and lives. Our own baptism may have been many years ago, and we may have been babies, so not to remember it, but it is good to review every now and then our own standing with God. And Advent gives us time to do that, time to look into our hearts and see if, see if they are still a good place for God to dwell. Do they need a bit of a clear out, a bit of a spring clean to be made ready to receive God afresh into our hearts and lives? This doesn't have to be done only in Advent. We can do it at any time. But the preparation time of Advent gives us pause and reason to check in with our hearts. And once we have received God into our hearts, it should make a difference in our lives. We should have hope where others may struggle to find hope. We should be builders of bridges in broken relationships. We should be people of peace and reconciliation in a world that sorely needs peace and reconciliation. And that fact is brought home to me when I look back to my time in the Holy Land just over a year ago and comparing it to the Holy Land we see in the news today. And I remember standing on the banks of the Jordan with fellow pilgrims and renewing my own baptism vows and welcoming God afresh into my heart to transform my life and to help me to be God's eyes and ears and hands and feet in this broken world. And I hope and pray that this Advent may give you time to prepare to do the same. Amen.
fine as fine My heart's one desire Is to be holy Set apart for you, Lord I choose to be holy Set apart for you, my Master Ready to do your will Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that we and your whole church may be prepared for your coming to us. When you come, may you find us a holy and godly people who strive for peace and live lives pleasing to you. We pray for all who are being baptised around this time and ask you to bless all parents and godparents. We come with all who are sorry for their sins and want to live a new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as the world continues with its wars and disputes, we remember all who are striving for peace. We particularly pray for the people of Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia, who are suffering at this time. Please bless the leaders of the nations and their peacekeeping forces. Please guide the work of the United Nations and that of the relief agencies. May all of us continue to strive for justice and freedom for all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that our homes are places of welcome, love and harmony. However, we know that there are people who are struggling for many reasons, such as financial problems, relationships, illness or bereavement. Lord, please send your Holy Spirit to direct, heal and comfort all who are suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Father God, John the Baptist knew that his job was to prepare people's hearts for the coming of Jesus, your Son. Please help us to listen to your voice so that we too can know what you want us to do in order to help build your kingdom here on earth. Now let's join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you to all our contributors to our prayers and reflections today. And thank you all for joining in. As we go and put the kettle on, or decide how to use our time for the rest of the day. May we continue to reflect on the questions that have been raised for us today. For me, I think today's reflections encourage me during Advent to focus on both the inner life as well as the active life, 
uh, to prayerfully and thoughtfully in Peter's words to live holy and godly lives and to participate in Advent preparation both individually and together with others, encouraging one another to hold ourselves and our broken world before God and to try to participate with him in bringing healing, restoration and hope in whatever ways we can manage. And not underestimating the value in even the smallest acts of service. Choosing to praise God when we feel weak and vulnerable. Sharing a card or note. Speaking a kind word. Giving a packet of tea for the community cupboard. Or praying a faithful prayer for someone. And so as we close this time together today, let's offer a prayer of blessing to one another. Loving and faithful God, as we continue our Advent journey, help us to be open to your spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth. We ask your blessing on each person present here. May we know your encouragement, peace and hope. And we pray your blessings on all those who suffer. May they know your comfort, healing and light in their darkness. And we pray for the reassurance of your presence with us. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep warm and stay safe until we meet next time. God bless. in love